All right, so we're recording. Um, so we're back with this kind of uh, doubly curved surface. And we still have over here um, our grid of XYZ points. And so again, um, you know, one way of thinking, a point is nothing more than a series of three numbers. Um, that, you know, and sometimes we interpret those three numbers as referencing a location in, uh, in XYZ space. And sometimes we uh, understand those three numbers as, as referencing a point in space uh, in UVW. Um, and the way we do that is by evaluating the surface. So we have the surface, and we've checked reparameterize just to be safe. And that works just like a curve, right? Like it says, whatever the domain of the surface is as created, let's assume that it goes from 0 to 1 in U and 0 to 1 in V. So when we do this, um, you know, what we get, again, um, and let me, I'm going to go back and just turn down the numbers on this. A lot. Right. See, that looks like a mess because we're getting a point, a normal vector, and a, f and a frame. And the frame is just another word for a plane. Um, Right, point you understand. Right, those are the location of the points, and you can see that, you know, this distance is larger than this distance because the form is folding here. Um, so if you have a frame, you know that's a plane that exists in the X Y Z world. So if you want to do something like, and this is a good place to see that draw on it, right, if you want to draw a uh, polygon, um, and let's turn the radius of that polygon way down. All you're doing here um, is I'm drawing a polygon on the plane that is tangent to this surface at each one of those points. And what that means is that the polygon that I get is ultimately planar in the real world uh, or in the XYZ world. I guess passes for me is the real world because it's where I spend most of my time. Um, so uh, if I say, you know, take a planar surface, right, I can make those into a series of planar surfaces because they're, they're flat, right? And you can see over here what's happening is here the surface is changing and half of it is, is like diving through the surface there. You know, or you can see, like, if we look at it in a side elevation, you know, over here, right, even though the, the renderer is a little bad, like, if you imagine that's curving, but this is just, it's like, just sitting on it, like, sitting on that curve. Like that. So that's one way of applying uh, a polygon to um, a surface. But there are others. Um, so another way to do this would be to say, well, what if instead of taking each of the, these points here, finding the plane and drawing the polygon on that plane, what if instead um, 
we, we said, okay, here are my points. Those points can be thought of as a series of uh, XY planes. Um, and I could draw a polygon on the plane. Right. Now, that polygon is probably going to have to be super small. So now I'm drawing my polygons flat on the XY plane in XYZ space. And then the next thing I'll do is um, divide the curves. Um, and I'll set that number of divisions to 1. But I'll say here there's a Boolean called uh, split it kinks. And I'm going to say true. And when I do that, Oops. True. And when I do that, it'll give me a point at each of the corner points. All right. So then I get, you know, I have 1,350 points, 1,350 hexagons, and I get 1,350 lists of six points, right? One for each vertex on the hexagon. And so now what I do is I can go back to my surface and use these points as the XYZ points to map onto my surface, right? Because these points, most of them, lie within the 0 to 0, 0 to 1, 1 range. So if I do that, then you could see, well, let's turn off uh, turn this off. Right. Um, right, when I do that, you can see what I'm getting now is now here are my hexagons mapped as points onto the surface. Um, let's turn that off. Right, so that should theoretically be in the middle, right? That's in the middle of the hexagon. And there's the hexagon. Um, so what's useful about the fact that each one is an individual list of six points is that I could do something like um, go to curve and make a polygon. And because each one is a list, oh, I want to say close, set boolean true. Right, because they're you know one thousand lists of six points, I get one thousand individual polygons. Now, the thing to understand about these polygons is a few things. One, they're not planar, right? Because this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point, they don't all fall on the same plane. They fall somewhere on that surface. The points fall on the surface. But the lines don't necessarily. They're close, but they don't necessarily hit that surface. Um, and that means a few things. One, it means if you try to do something like make it a planar surface, it won't work. Except for maybe that one, which was apparently the curvature of the surface, the base surface was close enough to a plane at that point that that one passed for a plane. But that's the only one out of a thousand of them. Um, uh, you could well there are, there are ways you could you could deal with this one way would be um, interestingly uh, well this is sort of fun let's do this right over here we still got that point um, and we have this normal vector Let's take that normal vector. I'm freestyling now. Um, let's take that point. 
let's take that vector and set its amplitude using a slider I'll call it peak and oops I didn't want to do a rotate I wanted to do a translate translate that point right so now we can can move that point off the surface right so we've got our call it the uh, peak point, um, and then over here, right? Let's let's hide that for the moment, right? Here we've got um, we've got a. Uh, um, a list of six points. Um, hmm. I want to do this. Let's do it like this. Mm. Um, what I want to do for each of these, like right now, I've got uh, a list. This is a uh, two hundred twenty-five lists of six. This is one list of two hundred twenty-five. If I hit graft, now it's 225 lists of one. The next thing I want to do, um, this is going to get a little weird. Maybe I shouldn't have done this, but I'm doing it now, so let's roll. Um, I'm going to duplicate that point in each of the lists um, six times. Um, and then here with each of these lists, right? So the list is like, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Um, I want to shift it. Um, I want to shift it by one and make sure it wraps. If it doesn't wrap, I'm going to get a list of five points because it's going to go two, three, four, five, six. And what I want is a list that goes two, three, four, five, six, one. So if I hit uh, true for wrap, now it does that. See how I got six? Um, and then what I want to do is take that one and graft it. So now each point is its own list and I'll do the same for this um, and I'll do the same for this one now I think what I can do let's hook these up all right, I'm also going to say simplify, simplify, simplify. So what that did was you see how um, this one has all that like, this the first one is 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 0. And this one, it, you know, becomes like 0, 0, 4. It just gets rid of all the unwanted numbers so that each one of these has a path where the first number rep references which polygon it was in and the second number is which point it is. So what I did here was basically make each point into its own list so that I could make a triangle. Alright, sorry, this was really weird. I shouldn't have done this, but let me finish it. Um, because what happens when you do that is it becomes a way of triangulating each one of these. And since they're triangular, those can always be planar. Right? So since they're planar, you know, you can make them into a... Come on. Don't make a liar out of me. 
Are the bylaws closed? Nope. Thank you. Right, so this became a way of, you know, making your metal, you metal studded, uh, <laughs> your metal studded um, surface. So this is your, this is your uh, metal based. <laughs> All right, <laughs> never mind. Um, anyway. Um, okay. Can you make the uh, distance between them variable? The, the way to do that, the distance between, would be to, um, would be to manipulate over here, like, um, you know, to make the distances variable here. Uh, which I suppose you could. I give the polygons a random radius. You could give the polygons a random radius, but you could also, uh, let's like, um, you could also change. You know, you could use, for example. Um, the graph mapper. You know, which will, which, you know, will allow you to vary the distance or vary the sort of x here. And so that'll have the result of, I mean, it's not so easily seen over here, but changing it here. That makes sense? It's, it's so the where did you get that? Was that in special? Yeah. Anything that's not a component is special or a, per, or a parameter. Um, and that's the graph member. Um, okay, but to go back uh, to Erica's question, which I keep getting sidetracked from for some reason. Um, so the thing about doing um, doing this was that um, actually let me sorry let me just go back and. You know, the thing about doing this is that you have to understand that these lines are not, um, do not form a planar curve. And even though the points are definitely on the surface, the lines might not be on the surface. Another way of doing this is there's a component called it's called curve on surface, and I can never remember if it's under curve or under surface. Um, curve on surface. And what curve on surface does is um, it takes a surface. And it takes a bunch of um, UV points and it um, and it connects them uh, and it, it forms a curve. Um, now this it's not a polygon um, but it is um, it is the these the whole curve lies on the surface, um, which is maybe not terribly useful because if you were drawing a hexagon, probably what you want is a hexagon. So um, let's look at one more way. There is one way of sort of having your cake and eating it too. Uh, 
And let's see how to do this. Um, let's do it this way. All right, so. And I would say it's like this, right? So here is our, our polyline again. And that polyline is, uh, let's see, it's centered around, where's that point, right? That point, and that point, um, and here's the normal. So that this uh, vector here points up from the surface at that point, right? So we have 225 vectors pointing up. Um, and if I give it like a sufficiently big amplitude, let's just set it to be four. Um, I could uh, transform that polyline. Oops. Ah. Right, here's my problem. That's a list, and each one of those is, that's 225 lists of one thing, so I could just flatten. Okay. Right. So now you can see what's happening is I've moved each one of those up. Um, let's maybe only move it up by uh, one. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, is take that vector and just, um, I don't know, multiply it by negative two. And I'm going to take my curve here, and I'm going to extrude it. And I'm, so when I have this vector that's pointing up, and its magnitude is one, and then I multiply it by negative two, what I get, sorry, this vector, what I get is that. Right, because I'm multiplying it by a negative magnitude, so it's now pointing the other direction, twice as far. Um, so if I now take this curve that I lifted off the surface, and then extrude it down, um, that's what I get. Right, as I get this series of like polygon tubes, Here's a point where you definitely save. Um, null surfaces, huh? Oh. Um, so that wants to be a uh, B rep. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, I'm going to graft it so it's in 225 lists. Um, so what I can do is go to intersect. And I want the intersection of a, uh, I want the intersection of a surface and a B rep. B rep, B rep, surface curve, B rep curve. Maybe there isn't surface in B rep. In which case, I can do a B rep and a B rep. So one of them, right, is my uh, is my surface. And the other one is this kind of honeycomb thing that I've made. Um, now, this kind of Boolean is the type of thing that might crash you out. This one looks OK. So I'm going to hide that. So um, the nice thing about doing this this way, right, if I turn this off, right? now I've got the best of both worlds. Um, so these. Now, now those curves now 
lie completely on the surface. But the thing to understand about those curves now is that they're not necessarily straight lines. Or they're probably not straight lines. So um, the trick, you know, with all of this is really to be in control of the geometry. You know, and understand, like, there's times when really what you want is you just want, you know, you want to just find the tangent and, you know, draw something that's going to be planar. There are times when you really care that you're getting, like, a tight fit. You know, like, if you imagine this is, like, a weld, like, that's, like, the weld line for, you know, welding that um, hexagonal extrusion onto this um, curved surface. Is there a, a, a map to surface component, like a flow along surface? No. You could project. Instead of extruding, you could project it onto the surface. That doesn't always work. Yeah, it just, it's, um, I've never understood why there isn't that. Um, I mean, I suspect it's in the works. Uh, you know, in some ways, you know, maybe you don't need it if you know what you're doing. Um, I mean, that's the thing about Grasshopper I found is that um, if you're just careful about what you're doing and you think it through and you understand, like, parameterized geometry, you can have a high degree of control, you know? Like, you know, y you can understand that, like, all right, that curve and uh, whatever, that curve, you know, although they, you know, the truth is, you know, within kind of like real tolerances, they're probably effectively the same. But in terms of the absolute tolerance of geometry, they're not. And in terms of their construction logic, they're not, you know. So you understand that this is made by connecting points that are along the surface via a straight line. The other one is made by taking a tube that intersects with the surface and finding their intersection point. Um, so I think understanding that difference is important. Any questions about this? I think I need to re-go over. Actually, I should, theoretically, I guess I don't need to re-go over anything because we're recording. Yes. Okay, then I'm going to stop this so it's not so long. <laughs>